All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for another one of our webinars for the Workforce Flooded Opportunity Fair. Today, we have Carla with us from Flooded Valley Community College to talk a little bit about nursing programs and um, what the different tracks are and some tips on how to get into the programs. Uh, yeah, so thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, happy to be here. And Luke, I have a little video that uh, says a lot about myself and the nursing program opportunities available here if you want to play that first. All right, sounds good. All right, can you see that? Yep. Uh, my name is Carla Genovese and I'm the nursing program director at a community college here in Kalispell, Montana. I've been a nurse for almost 30 years. Uh, my grandmother was a nurse and um, I learned from her and watching her and always thought that what she did as far as taking care of patients was really neat and something that I wanted to do and follow in her footsteps. I think people who want to go into healthcare obviously like people, they want to take care of people, and they're very interested in science. So if you want to go into nursing, I would advise you to take a lot of high school math, um, all the high school science, um, chemistry, biology, a and P that you can. You also need to be able to write clearly and speak effectively. I would also advise students to um, try to do as well as you can in high school because all nursing programs are highly competitive to get into them, so you really need to have good grades and be a good test taker. Um, and then try not to get in trouble with the law. Make good choices because if you have felonies, it's really hard to get into a nursing program. Um, so nursing is a really great for profession for a high school student to enter into if they enjoy working with people. And the best thing about nursing is that with any one degree, there are so many more opportunities for, for jobs and specialized care. Um, you can work in hospitals, clinics, long-term care, and even if you decide to specialize as a nurse in a hospital, you can get more specific on the job training and train in a specific area like I did in critical care or nursing education or emergency care, et cetera. So lots of different opportunities with one degree is the best thing about having a nursing degree. Hi, my name is Josh. I'm a pediatric nurse here in Kalispell. When you're going through becoming a nurse, realize you're not alone as you go through it. Um, the challenges are hard, but it is worth it. At the start of our day, we do um, a handoff report from the previous shift. You're trying to think of, okay, how, how, am I, how do I hope my day is going to work out? Um, which patients do I want to see first based on what medications, what additional tasks that those patients are going to require. But also doing your best, especially in pediatrics, um, updating the parents um, for them and if the child's old enough to update the child as well. So we're constantly always reassessing as you go along throughout your day. And then as the shift ends up, preparing to hand off your patients for the previous day. The one wonderful thing about nursing is you have so many fields you can go into. You're never just stuck in one. Um, if you decide that you want to switch from one department to the other, there's those opportunities. But yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful, challenging road, but it is worth it in the end. Tell me a little bit about some of the different programs that, uh, that you offer here at the college. So we offer uh, three different nursing programs. One is a CNA program or a certified nursing assistant. That is about an eight week course and it's offered at least once, sometimes twice every semester. Um, students who are 16 years of age or older can enter into that class. Um, that prepares students to work as certified nursing assistants in long-term care facilities. And there are lots of jobs available locally. Um, we also offer a practical nursing program. That program is three semesters long or 41 credits. The first program or the first semester is the prerequisites and then there's two semesters of nursing program, of nursing specific courses. Um, practical nurses must take the state licensing exam before they can practice, but there's lots of job opportunities in clinics, um, long-term care facilities, assisted living, schools, et cetera. And again, lots of jobs available in our local area. 
And then the third program we offer is the Registered Nursing Program. This is an Associates of Science degree in nursing or an ASN. That's five semesters. The first semester is prerequisites and then four semesters of um, nursing courses. Students that graduate from this program must also take the state licensing exam. And that licensing is, is exam is the same for students that have an associate's degree or students that complete a bachelor's degree. These students will be, become registered nurses and they can practice in hospitals, clinics, long-term care, schools, lots of different job opportunities available for them. And then students with an associate degree can also transfer to a four-year college to earn their bachelor's degree. And then once they have a bachelor's degree in nursing, they can go on to other opportunities to be a nurse practitioner or get a master's degree in nursing or even a doctorate in nursing. So there's lots of opportunities available here in the local area um, with just a few semesters to get students started. Okay, great. What, what kind of opportunities are there for funding, um, you know, for people that want to come here, but you know, trying to balance, because right, it, it's a rigorous program, so it's hard to work. It is, it is, it is challenging. Um, some of our students do try to keep working while they're in school, but the school uh, classes and labs and clinical rotations are pretty much full time. So it is impossible for students to work full time while they're in school, they might be able to work a little bit. So there are some opportunities for funding and there's some scholarships available that are on the FBCC website and students just fill out one application. And then there are also some um, academic scholarships for students that have earned at least 30 credits can apply for those. So those scholarships don't help students that are just starting, but it does give them the opportunity to, um, you know, get a little bit of scholarship money for their last later semesters. And then FBCC also has some articulation agreements with four-year colleges, which means students can take classes here at a reduced rate to apply to their bachelor's program at another school. Okay. So can they actually get their bachelor's without leaving or do they, will they still need it to transfer at some point? They will need to transfer at some point if they want a bachelor's degree, but there are a lot of bachelor's degree programs now that are available online. The beauty of doing that is that students who successfully complete their ASN can practice as a registered nurse and be making money while they go back to school online to earn their bachelor's degree. Most bachelor's degree programs are completely online and don't require any in-person visits. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So do if you, if you move from that ASN to a BSN, does that require additional clinicals? Or if you're already a registered nurse, are yeah. you just getting some of the other components for a bachelor's degree? Exactly. You're just taking coursework to get the bachelor's degree. Okay. Most programs don't require any additional clinicals. Some do. And um, when I worked at CareH, there were, we did have some students that were in a BSN completion program that we worked around their work schedule and knew that at some times when they were on campus, they might be wearing two different hats. One is an employee and one is a student. So okay. some, some programs do, most don't. Okay. Uh, in, in the video, they kind of talked about, you know, some things that high school students can do to, mm -hmm. you know, prepare or potential nursing students, yep. you know, to, to prepare. But what are some other things um, that, that you really think are like really important to do? Or, you know, when you're looking at applicants, what are things that tend to stand out? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we certainly look at grades. Most nursing schools or all nursing schools are highly competitive because we have limited amount of clinical sites. So we can only take a limited number of students each semester. So we do look at GPA. Um, that is important. It's important for students who are in high school to get an advantage by taking all of the extra science, chemistry, math classes that they can. And then to also do well in writing because they need to be able to write effectively and communicate effectively. Um, we also look at students who are active in their community, and we want to make sure that students have made good choices. Like I said in the video, um, it's difficult if someone has been convicted of a felony to get into a nursing program because of our clinical partnerships. So make good choices, uh, get good grades. Here at the FECC nursing program, we also require students to take an entrance exam, and that tests their ability in math science and reading and writing. So again, doing well in those courses in high school will set them up for success on that entrance exam. Okay, great. And, and what is sort of the forecast with, you know, the, the need and demand for nurses, um, both CNAs, LPNs and RNs over the next five or so years? 
Yeah, the demand continues to go up. Um, every year there's projected nursing shortages across the US of 200,000 to 500,000 nurses. Um, most nursing schools saw an increase in enrollment during the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're still dealing with because people feel the need to do something to help. So that's helping, but again, with, with limited clinical partnerships, we have to limit the number of students we take. So um, it is difficult to meet that need. There are a lot of job opportunities for CNAs, practical nurses, and registered nurses right here in the Valley and then nationwide. Um, I, don't see, I'm, I don't see us being able to completely meet that need anytime soon, which is good for our students who are coming into the profession. They, they will not have difficulty getting a job. Um, it's unfortunate for our community partners that we, we can't meet their needs fast enough. Okay. In, in terms of, you know, what FEC, uh, FECC offers, what are some of the components or aspects of the program that, that you think like would have appealed to you most as a potential student, you know, or what some, some added value that the college brings that maybe they might not get at another program? Yeah, um, FECC is small and our nursing department is small. Um, I have 10 full-time or part-time faculty members that report to me. So, and then we take about 10 to 12 students each semester. So I think one of the biggest advantages of the FECC program and the reason that our outcomes are always achieved and our program is so successful is that students really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from each faculty member. Um, students, uh, we get to know them all really well. I've only been in my role about three months and they already feel like members of my own family. Um, we're very close in this department and the faculty are highly vested in student success and everything they do is, is built around making our students be successful because we're, we're creating a, a healthcare workforce that's going to take care of people. So we tell our students to study like somebody's lives depend on it because somebody's life does depend on it. So I think the smallness of our program is what makes it so successful. Okay, great. Well, I have two other questions for you. Um, and then it looks like we'll be almost out of time. Um, what are some of the advantages that someone would get by starting out as a CNA or an LPN before moving in, you know, uh, to that RN role? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, there's a couple advantages. Uh, the first one is financial. So if you become a CNA, you can start out making an annual salary of maybe around $24,000 a year. So that allows you to keep working, have a fairly flexible schedule with your employer and go to school at the same time. So a CNA could decide that they want to go on and be a practical nurse or they want to be a registered nurse. The same with practical nurses. They can become, you know, go to school for three semesters, become a practical nurse, and then start working for a while, making money, paying back whatever student loans they might already have, and then starting to pay for classes towards their registered nursing degree. Uh, so there really is an advantage in financially, but there's also an advantage in learning. You know, if you, if you always thought you wanted to be a nurse and then you took the CNA class and you thought, oh gosh, I was wrong. This is not what I want to do. It's better to have just spent one semester rather than five semesters to realize that isn't what you want to do. And then also that hands-on experience students gain from being a CNA, then when they come into nursing school, either as a practical nurse or a registered nurse, is just invaluable. They are so much further ahead because they know basic patient care, they know how to communicate with patients, they know medical terminology. So nursing school is just that much easier for them. Okay. And given the competitive nature of nursing schools throughout the country, if someone has, you know, they are currently a CNA or an LPN, does that increase you know, having that clinical experience, does that in increase their competitive application to get in? Yep, so it hadn't in the past, that wasn't on our application, but um, the FPC nurse, FPCC nursing program also has an advisory board, which is made up of community stakeholders. And that was one of the recommendations the advisory board brought to us in February, is that yeah. we should consider that and score that on the application. So we have since added it. It's not on our current application process, which is happening right now because that was already in progress, but it will be on our application process starting in January of 2022. And so therefore students with previous healthcare experience, whether it's CNA, practical nurse, EMT, will get a little bit higher preferential score on the application. 
Okay. Awesome. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me share for anybody that has um, any more questions, you know, or want to follow up. Here's the contact information for Carla, as well as Kathy, who um, helps coordinate some of the nursing program. But mm -hmm. do you have any final thoughts you want to share with us, Carla, before we go? Um, I don't think so, other than to say, um, you know, I have always been in awe of FBCC's nursing program because I worked at the hospital and was a hiring director of nurses and seeing the caliber of nurses that the FBCC nursing program um, was admitting into the, work, into the workforce was really amazing. So for me to be in charge of this program and oversee this program is truly an honor. And I really would be happy to talk to anybody that's interested in joining this program or would like more information. Kathy and I are both available and would be really happy to answer questions. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Sure, thanks for having me. Right, have a great day. Thanks, you too.